It is said that there is a lesson to be learned for every person you meet in one's lifetime. Whether it be friend, or whether it be foe. I've been involved with the Sensei pretty much from the beginning, from its inception, when Diana first started talking about it. You know, I, I, I would guess that she, she had spoke about this for a few years. She always spoke of Gilbert Johnson. And, uh, you know, that's who, what started her on this whole quest. Some people in the martial arts industry may be familiar with the name because he was one of the people instrumental for finishing my uncle's book, The Tao Jeet Kune Do, which is still one of the most popular martial arts books worldwide. Uh, he also was instrumental in helping my father with his book called The Filipino Martial Arts. Anyway, Gil was a very close family friend who had died from AIDS. He was a straight man, conservative martial artist who contracted the disease from a blood transfusion. And Gil bravely stood beside the gay community and became an activist. Uh, he was there to warn the world that AIDS is not just a disease that affects homosexuals. And this was at a time when identifying oneself as HIV positive meant alienation or worse. Anyway, Gil's brave stand was a profound influence and motivator uh, to do this movie. How did you learn to move like that? He must be great. It's a she. Actually. She? How did that happen? She's my sensei. You know McLean Evans? Glad I saw him. Getting beat up. Did you guys see that? Yeah, oh, yeah, I, I saw, saw that. that. Yeah, I thought so. Let's just say women in my family are expected to know their place. Where is your family on? Like a father who loves his child, he will punish that child that does not buy by his word. I want you to teach my son. Listen, nobody has to know. You're training my son. Nobody. You have the right to defend yourself against hatred and self-hatred. teaching people to protect themselves, so that's what I did! What's wrong with that? He's gay! This is a small town, Karen! Hey! Hey! Your sister! Get out! There's something about the sensei that is, uh, reflecting a, a, certain, a certain climate in our country about discrimination, about prejudice, about bullying uh, people that are, are different from ourselves. And so I knew we were on the right path when we decided that uh, uh, we were going to do the sensei. And obviously there is a need for, for this kind of movie. One thing that really, after reading the script, that, that I thought was that it just covers so much ground, and, and I thought it's not possible, but just reading it, it, it's amazing how well the script is written, and covering all these various uh, aspects of uh, 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 our social uh, uh, status at the, in the 1980s, and it also gave a sense of immediacy. I mean, I remember 1981, 85, but uh, this movie really, See, I, I was in Los Angeles, but we're here in a small town, and the stigma, the, the absolute fear of not being able to um, find friendship, uh, uh, support, and this movie just brings all that out. I, I'm getting chills talking about it, but it is quite powerful, quite powerful. I'm crying now. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's interesting? That you, every time you look at the martial arts world, you never see this stuff. 
never. You see martial arts, you know how macho they are, you know how much pain they can take, you know the training and, and all these wonderful things. You know, I'm not saying these are bad, they're great. But it's been done over and over and over again. But now this element, however, I've not ever, never seen in a film that involves martial arts. And you know what? The other part of martial arts is the spirituality of it. To me, the sensei was about uh, just McLean finding his way through life, you know, being able to, to accept himself. And um, a lot of people, you know, we have a lot of problems with this movie just because everybody's like, ah, oh, it's a kung fu flick or something like that. But uh, really, um, just because it has martial arts in it doesn't mean by any reason that it's a, uh, it's a martial arts movie. Um, the Sensei is about a woman teacher uh, by the name of Karen Nakano O'Neill, who is gifted in the martial ways. And she befriends this gay teenage boy who is modeled after Matthew Shepard. And he eventually becomes her secret pupil after he is brutally beaten almost to death. And um, we find that through their relationship that they are both transformed by their own personal tragedies. And they both, even though these are two very wounded individuals, they both um, learn to evolve and come to terms with their, their own personal experiences. Yes, this is what I want, the two shot. Good, we're gonna go single, and then, and then single two. So come out this way a little bit, we'll cheat them. So when he says the plural's aligned, didn't you see them looking at my ass? You will always look at me the entire time. You look at my ass, homo? No, I thought I saw you looking at my ass. Did you guys see that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I, I saw, saw that. that queer. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> okay, now go ahead and proceed with the choreography. Sins, faggot. <laughs> He's bleeding. Go back on it, boys. Woo! I'm all clear to this school. <laughs> it's it's okay, dude. They're just having fun. Well, Diana, as a, as a director, was great. She sort of she sort of led me in a in a way that um, that was easy for me to follow. Um, and it was it's quite interesting because, you know, not only is she the director, but she's the actor. So, um, so just playing off her in the scenes, um, she was able to push me in the way she sort of wanted me to go without having to say, cut, okay, this is where I want you to go. So, I mean, I, found, I find that interesting, and it was great how she did that. fight scenes for the sensei. I think we had a lot of fun putting them together. Uh, you'll see when you watch the movie, we tried to lean towards more the realistic of what could happen versus like fantasy martial art fight scenes. I tried to put together scenes that, that you could sit there and digest and say, well, you know, maybe somebody could pull this off on the street. Uh, one of the things, the problems we had was I think that Michael Lasky is an awesome martial artist, sometimes too good, and he was McLean, a character that was just coming up. He was evolving. So you gotta, you gotta think of this, uh, what a one-year student might look like versus a 10-year student. So we kinda had to pull the reins back on him a little bit and kinda dirty it up, <laughs> you know. Uh, with Diana, uh, it was a given. For me, it was easy. Uh, she knows exactly what I like, and I know what she likes in, in it. You know, we work together so much, and we train together so much to where it, it's just, it's simple for me with her. I could ask something of her and I know she could pull it off right away. Nice. Okay. 
Uh, some of the other fight scenes that we got to do and some of the other people, uh, there's Mark McGraw. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. It opens the camera. We gotta be careful. We gotta be slow. Let's go through it a couple times. There was Jonathan Camp. Louis Mandelar, Oscar Bravo. When you see him, uh, the Lewis character, the, the fights, I felt so bad for Lewis. He was in that ring for about 14 hours. It was so long and arduous on him, but I mean, when you see it, you'll see it comes through. Sensei is a script that I've been aware of for a long time, ever since its inception, because Diana used to be, you know, she was a former student of mine. So she had, you know, gave me the script and we looked at it and we know we, have, we talked about it, we discussed it. And I thought it was brilliant, the fact that she did it, she went and did it. It was the brilliant part. Got a lot of people can talk about it, but nothing gets done, you know what I mean? So she's doing it, she, she's not Action. only doing it in the way where she's written it, she's going to direct it. And uh, I'm very proud of her, the fact that, you know, she, she's able to get all of these elements together. You know how hard it is to get a project done? I mean, it's, it's not easy. I, I, I've gotten, you know, projects that took 10, 15, you know, years just in the making when I tried to get it done. But I, I think it, it tells me that Diana as an individual, you know, has the, the talent and the drive. Do you want to isolate it or do you want to spread out? And then if, if, if this is what came well, out. say your line, Jen. The Sensei is a movie that deals with the nature of prejudice, whether this would be through sexism, through racism, as in the scene with Keith David at the very beginning of the movie, or through uh, discrimination against gays, as we see through uh, the embodiment of uh, McLean Evans. When I wrote The Sensei, I wanted to address these issues. And I found that through these three characters, the first character, McLean Evans, was a character that I actually modeled after Matthew Shepard. And if you remember the Matthew Shepard case, uh, Matthew Shepard was a, a young gay man that was murdered in Laramie, Wyoming. And I never forgot that incident because around that same time, my own cousin had revealed that she was gay. And it was a real awakening for me because I never quite understood the kind of harassment that uh, gays and lesbians and even their own families may go through. She said she's making this movie, The Sensei, and she would love me to look at the role of Mark Corey. And uh, I said, sure. I, I read the script and uh, I read it in one sweep, which is rare for me. I'm a slow reader, and uh, just fell in love with the project and got behind it. I support it 100%. I told Diana if I can give the performance in conjunction to how I read it, we'll be in good shape. Because whilst I was reading the script, it just tore me up. It's a it's a humane story. It's a story of ignorance of humanity. It's a story of pride and love and uh, dealing, I guess, with the the realities of our society and um, it really touched a nerve and everyone else I've told to read the script has felt the same way as well. It's very powerful, it's very real and it's a wonderful indie, you know, you do these action movies, it's such and you can only go so deep with a lot of projects because it's about something else, you know, it's about that with a little action but this is a, hu a humane story. One of the things that inspired me to go forward with writing the script was 9-11 and one of the things that I was most shocked about is that um, 30 to 40 percent of the people that had donated blood in New York had found out that they were HIV or AIDS positive. Basically, the sensei is a paradox. It deals in it with a time when everybody thought that uh, AIDS was a gay disease. But in the movie, we see that really um, we have a gay character who doesn't have AIDS, and we have straight characters that do. I think there's something for every single person in this movie, but I really hope that the, that the music, most of all, helps communicate that, that people are people, and, and we're all in this together, and there's just no time and no place for intolerance, you know, in this world. Before I became the producer and the stunt coordinator on the Sensei, I got a chance to go to South Africa. I was filming Zulu stick fighting, so I was living there for about a month, 
and I was way in the bush. And uh, I found out something that really scared me a lot was that one in six are estimated to have AIDS or HIV AIDS and uh, the numbers are growing rapidly. They're finding out that women now are getting the disease on purpose. And um, the, the logic behind it, which I thought was insane, was uh, they're so deprived they don't have much and the government would help them if they have this disease. So they're literally getting infected on purpose, which uh, is to me horrible. It's, uh, it's, it's drastic for the country. People need to see the genesis of how far we've come and also how we need to, it, this is not over, this fight is not over. And I think, you know, by doing this film, you know, it kind of gives the, the audience an opportunity to bring it back to the forefront and say, hey, you know, we still got a lot of work to do. I would hope that the audience walks away uh, with a better understanding, number one, of what it is to be uh, a victim of hatred, to be a victim of prejudice. I would also hope that the uh, audiences would be inspired to take action when they see any kind of form of uh, discrimination or assault and, and learn to make a stand. And the other thing you hope is that uh, people are led more down a path of uh, compassion and acceptance. Life is a series of lessons where we are student and teacher for one another. You know what the funny thing is? What? We don't have to learn all the lessons. You can be free, let go, free of pain, be free of fear, regret and you can return home to God. The beautiful thing about working on this film is the synchronicity of people that uh, came aboard on this project. Everyone came out of their own goodwill uh, because they believed in the humanitarian message of this film. Um, people both behind the scenes and uh, in front of the camera. And ironically, I think the interesting thing about the whole AIDS phenomenon is that it either inspires the worst or it inspires the best of people. And I think uh, in my experience as a director on this film, I got to see the best. People read the script and they saw the message of the film and they said, hey, you know what, there's a need for this kind of film. And when I have somebody say thank you for making this film because you know what, I think you're going to save lives or you're representing my child that used to be bullied, you know, it really makes, makes me realize that there was a higher reason for all of this. And then I saw the film and I was like, wow, I'm so proud of you that you're a part of such an amazing piece of art and work. And I have these people do, to be so gracious to, to make, to make movies, to make films like this that'll change the world. And it's an honor to be here today.